the city is buzzing with activity and there's a notable mix of excitement and inconvenience in the air. Like the, everything's shut down right here and like you're looking over there and all you see is like metal everywhere and you see orange pylons all over the place. It's kind of not what Vegas is about. You come here for glamour and this is a mess. As unfortunate as it is, I think it, you know, we're bringing more industry to Vegas. You know, it sounds like some cool stuff's going on. It's hard not to be supportive of it. As construction work for the event is in full swing, it's hard to ignore the changes taking place. Imagine a middle-aged couple strolling hand in hand along a covered walkway leading from the Las Vegas Strip to the entrance of the Bellagio. They pause briefly to catch a glimpse of the famous fountains, but the traditional viewing area was blocked by construction, leaving them somewhat dissatisfied. The man turned to the woman and asked, what is all that they're building? She confidently replied, another hotel. However, it's not just another hotel. In fact, it's a massive project that might be mistaken for something more permanent. Along the lakefront sidewalk of the Strip, MGM Resorts is creating the Bellagio Fountain Club. This luxurious hospitality area will offer top-notch food and incredible views of Formula One cars racing down the Strip at an estimated 212 miles per hour during the Las Vegas Grand Prix very soon. Three-day ticket packages for the Fountain Club are available, but they come with a price tag of just, well, $11,247 per person. Most visitors are aware of the impending F1 race, even if that couple didn't quite realize what they were looking at. F1's presence is hard to miss, with lighting trusses stretching over a mile down the west side of the strip, major roads interrupted by racetrack fencing, and grandstands going up in front of iconic attractions like the Bellagio Fountains and Mirage Volcano. F1 signage is everywhere, serving as a massive promotion for the upcoming event. As you walk further down the strip, you'll encounter curious onlookers and budding F1 enthusiasts. This is F1 right here, one man exclaimed to his friends as he emerged from Harris, pointing to the towering trusses on the other side of the street. Outside the Cosmopolitan, another man observed the freshly laid asphalt on Las Vegas Boulevard and asked his group if they wanted to attend the November race. With the Grand Prix just around the corner, the city presents a somewhat disjointed scene. Track assembly and normal life in Vegas coexist in a unique way. On a pedestrian bridge outside the Cosmo, a busker plays music, while nearby, the dancing grandma draws a crowd with her hula-hooping antics. A Mickey Mouse and Bumblebee from Transformers pose for photos near the Mirage, just feet from a DRS zone. Adding to the eclectic atmosphere is the smell of marijuana in the air, along with workers distributing less than glamorous advertisements for certain services. But whether Las Vegas is ready or not, the Strip is about to undergo a significant transformation in just a few weeks. At the intersection of Harmon and Coval Lane, in a previously vacant 39-acre lot next to an apartment complex, F1 is constructing a spectacular 300,000-square-foot pit building. This structure will house garages, suite and a rooftop deck with a giant screen in the shape of the F1 logo. It's three football fields long and serves as the only permanent structure along all the elements being assembled for the Grand Prix. F1 owner Liberty Media is taking charge of the race instead of relying on a promoter, and they've invested a whopping $240 million in the vacant lot alone. They expect the capital expenditures for the entire race to reach around $400 million. During a recent tour of the pit building, a worker was busy filling soap dispensers in the upscale bathrooms, while other parts of the property still require significant work. This includes a towering grandstand, team hospitality structures in the paddock area, and turns one to four of the track, including the start-finish line. From the top of the pit building, you get a general idea of the circuit's path. It winds off the property and through the intersection of Coval and Flamingo Avenue, which hold historical significance as the place where Tupac Shakur was fatally shot in 1996. The track then takes a turn down Sands Avenue, with cars speeding past the convention center before making a left turn onto the strip between the Venetian and the Wynn. If last week's construction-related traffic on Sands is any indication, the F1 cars will be the only things moving quickly during race weekend. 
Vegas residents aren't quite excited. Right now, if you don't know where you're going, it could take you 30 minutes to go a couple of casinos down the strip, a taxi driver with 12 years of experience in Las Vegas. He blames the traffic buildups on track construction and the frequent unpredictable road closures that force locals to guess every morning about where setup is taking place. Alternate routes are often needed but aren't communicated well enough. The traffic on race weekend is expected to be so bad that the taxi drivers plan to take all three days off rather than navigate the gridlock. Even race fans who have lived in Las Vegas all their lives find it hard to muster enthusiasm for the event. They were initially thrilled about F1 coming to town and hoped to attend the race. However, once they saw the ticket prices starting at $1,500 each for grandstand seats, they realized that regular people like themselves couldn't afford to go. For many locals, the event is more about inconvenience than excitement. The over-the-top F1 experience It's essential to understand that the concept of hosting an F1 race in Las Vegas is all about offering an over-the-top experience. Even though 100,000 fans are expected to attend each day, it's the wealthiest and trendiest individuals who are at the forefront. Missing out on the spectacle is almost unthinkable for them, and they are eager to secure their spots in the VIP hospitality areas, whether it's in the pit building, a viewing area on casino property, or trendy spots like the Red Bull Energy Station and the nightlife-inspired Heineken House. For those hoping to enjoy the race from a strip-side restaurant table, it might be a bit challenging. Locals investigated the place and said, We couldn't find any available tables at popular restaurants like Margaritaville, Bubba Gump's, Rainforest Cafe and Sugar Factory, which all offer prime views of the racetrack. These venues have been fully booked for all three days of the race weekend. The construction show must go on. Over the last week, the city will continue to undergo significant changes as more high-end hospitality zones and additional track structures are completed. While most areas will return to their typical look after the F1 event, one spot has already been permanently altered. To make way for the Bellagio Fountain Club, the resort had to cut down 40 mature trees that had been transplanted from the old Dunes Golf Course in the late 1990s. These trees have now been turned into wood chips which will be spread at local parks, further stirring up frustration among some locals who weren't adequately informed about the changes. Despite the potential hassles and negative perceptions, the city remains open to F1 fans arriving for one of the most hyped motorsport races in history. The economic impact is undoubtedly a welcome aspect, and Las Vegas, ever the city of transformation, is ready to put on a show that will be remembered for years to come. Let us know what is your opinion about the F1 Las Vegas Grand Prix in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to DRS.